When looking at appropriation and copyright together, it is always helpful to determine what each of their definitions are. Copyright is a lawful right which allows something that one owns or has created to be protected. The owner has the right to authorise or restrict the making of copies and the copyright on this product is automatically instated from the moment of its creation. As for appropriation, the Oxford Dictionary states it is a deliberate reworking of images and styles from earlier, well-known works of art and taking for one's own use. This is typically done without the owner's permission. These two often clash together from the creation of work too closely inspired by other works of art. This here is an example of a breach in copyright through appropriation. The photograph on the left was taken by Art Rogers in 1985 and sold for products much like greeting cards and other similar products. Then in 1988, Jeff Koons created the sculpture as seen in the photograph on the right to be included in an exhibit on the banality of everyday items. Coons came across Roger's photograph and then used it to create a set of statues based on imi the image of which he sold and made a sizable profit. When Rogers discovered Coons' sculptures, he sued Coons for copyright in which Coons claimed fair use by parody in defence. The outcome of this case favoured Rogers in that the court found the similarities between the two works of art too similar. Coons was then forced to pay a monetary settlement to Rogers as his defence was rejected and was argued that Coons could have made the same statement with a more generic source without copying Rogers' work. Cases such as these often bring up the question of whether photography is an art. It also questions if you can build on other people's work to create original pieces of your own, or does it then constitute as derivative work? Does it then also change the meaning of the work? Depending on the case and the similarities between the artworks, the appropriated work of art is often produced for ulterior motives and various reasons, which can often differ from the original artwork. But this is, always, is this always the case? In appropriated court cases that favour the original author's side as a result, this most likely does not change the meaning of the work despite the appropriated author disagreeing in defence of his work, especially as the works are too similar. Anyone can apply a meaning to a photograph that makes sense and, makes, and works with the image, but it does not mean the original meaning has any less effect or is replaced by the new meaning. Mishka Henna's works, such as his series Pumped, is an example that the meaning can change from the original image. Henna is well known for using images from Google Street View and then recontextualizing the imagery. The images Henna has appropriated are striking large-scale inkjet prints, and the way Henna presents them appear initially as closer to abstract landscape paintings before realizing they are in fact web images freely available on Google Earth software. The meaning changes as the Google Earth software intends to be used as a way of mapping the world for everyone's use. However, Mishka Henna's work takes photography into the digital age and creates aesthetic photographs from unusual perspectives in order to confuse the audience and make them think as well as show the repetitiveness of oil rigs over the world from a unique point of view. I will now divert the topic towards adaptations. The adaptation right, as stated in Beyond the Lens book, allows the author or creator to license another person to make an adaptation of their work. This is more commonly used for books being turned into films or plays. However, in photography there is not really a place for the adaptation right. Instead, photographers rely on the reproduction right as a means to control the making of copies. This can clash with appropriation in terms of the reproduction right as it does not necessarily cover the adaptations of the original work and can therefore create a problem between making, taking the value away from the original compared to the copy, despite being authorised. This, this is then appropriation. On the other hand, this caption from Beyond the Lens covers the borderline between secondary work and appropriated images. Where a second image or photograph is created by another, the permission should be obtained from the photographer or artist who created the first image. Then if the, there is sufficient creative input in the second work, it will be created as an original copyright protected work in its own right. However, that does not affect the copyright protection afforded to the underlying work, which in the case of a photograph will belong to the first photographer and which should be respected. 
Unless the secondary work has a significant amount of creative change or input, the copyright belongs to the first image's author. However, any copyright on the first image is still in place, so if the secondary image breaches this copyright without the original author's permission, then the first author has the right to sue the secondary author. As a whole, the link between appropriation and adaptations is a very fine line to distinguish between the two. In addition, the use of other artworks as insp inspiration is not frowned upon, but is it is illegal to too closely replicate its content for the creation of work that is labelled as original. Sometimes these boundaries are confusing, lost or misinterpreted when work is created, which often leads to being sued and a breach in copyright. If in doubt, it is always best to gain permission from the creator, owner or author of the original work.